This ain't your grandma's rum and raisin ice cream. This is rum and raisin whiskey. Welcome to Grand Fine Whiskey, my name is Matt and today I'm looking at an awesome little bottle coming out of Cologne Distillery. Before we get started, if you're not subscribed yet, I put out a new whiskey review every Wednesday and I put out a new cocktail recipe every Friday. So if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. I'm just going to get this in the glass. The Cologne Rum and Raisin is coming out of a little distillery up in County Louth in Ireland and when I say little, I really mean it. Cologne are a tiny micro distillery and they put out very limited edition small batch releases of very specialist whiskey. This is actually the second batch of the Rum and Raisin. The Rum and Raisin is a five-year-old single malt that was aged in bourbon casks before being split up and then aged in Pedro Jimenez casks and Caribbean rum casks. After being split up, it was then recombined into a really great little whiskey, and that's where they get the name. Pedro Jimenez generally imparts notes of raisins, of nuttiness, of nice spice, and then rum casks impart a nice rummy sweetness, vanilla, and tropical notes, hence the name rum and raisin. One thing you should know about Cologne is that they don't filter their whiskies. Most distilleries will actually say they don't chill filter their whiskies. Cologne don't filter it at all. It comes out of the barrel and goes straight into the bottles. This means that sometimes Cologne bottles will have little pieces of barrel actually floating around in the whiskey. Cologne's master distiller, Brendan Carty, has talked about how he's gotten dozens of emails from people saying that there's something wrong with their whiskey. But in reality, it's just a little bit of barrel that's gone from the cask into the bottle. And I think that's really great. It shows that they're a really craft producer and that they don't touch their whiskies. It comes out of the barrel, goes into the bottle, into your glass and into your mouth. Speaking of which, I think it's time to get into the nose of this whiskey. Mm, immediately on the nose, I'm getting vanilla pods. Not like a sweet vanilla or like vanilla syrup or vanilla extract, like really rich vanilla pods. Like that, if you uh, scrape open a vanilla pod, you get those pods in there. It's really, it's really rich, dense, natural vanilla. Then there's like some nice deep brown sugar sweetness that follows through. There's some nice spiced raisins in there, classic from the Pedro Jimenez influence. There's a little bit of nuttiness maybe, there's like almost somewhere between like an almond and a walnut, that kind of not like, not a peanut, not like a, not a hazelnut, a kind of nice rounded out nuttiness in there. There's also kind of almost like a like apple juice, not like the flesh of a green apple, not like the skin of a red apple, like apple juice, like a kind of a cloudy apple juice, that kind of dense sweetness, it kind of really mixes well I think with that brown sugary note I was getting earlier, so that I think it's a really nice complex nose on this whiskey. Yeah that's, that's, a, that's a nice a lot of flavour in this nose, so I think it's time we go in for the palate. Oh wow, oh wow. There's a sherry explosion on the palate. Those dried fruits, that kind of sherry sweetness, that sherry spiciness, it comes through in droves. It's very rich, it's very dense. Like the ABV on this whiskey is actually quite noticeable, but it's very well incorporated. The whiskey comes in at 55% alcohol. Like I said, it comes out of the cask, goes into the barrel, so it is a cask strength whiskey. But I think that alcohol is really well incorporated. There's a lot of other flavors in there. There's like a good amount of nuttiness that's coming through that can, as I said, that kind of walnuty, almondy note is coming through. There's a nice round, deep vanilla sweetness as well that kind of lingers in at the back side of this whiskey. It's nice and rich. It's surprisingly light for a 55% whiskey. So I'm gonna go back in and see if I find anything else. Okay, so I'm not really getting more notes here. It's more of a continuation from the nose. Like I find that sometimes happens with cask strength whiskies. Because it's not been adulterated, what you see in the nose it kind of follows through in the palate, and that's what I'm getting here. There's a little bit of like, maybe that apple juice coming through at the end of the palate. There's a nice, deep, round, rich brown sugar sweetness. There's a whole lot of vanilla to unpack in there. They suggest that there might be some coconut in there. I'm personally not finding it. Like I, Some people probably will, but I personally don't find any coconut in the palate of this whiskey. It's just nice. It's really rich. It's very juicy. It's nice and light, it's nice and refreshing, so I think I'm going to go in again, but I'm going to talk about the finish. Okay, that nuttiness from the nose and from the palate 
that comes up more, I think, in the finish than it does in the palette. Those sweet notes kind of, they kind of fade away. You're left with a nice kind of tingly spice. That ABV, that kind of light, it's not really a burn, but it's like a, a tingle. That's definitely apparent in there in the finish. It's lasting. The juiciness kind of holds on, but then it fades away. The raisiny, spiced raisin notes, they fade away. The apple juice also fades away. You're just kind of left with this nice spiciness, nuttiness, and that tingle from the ABV. I mean, this is a really great whiskey. I can definitely see why it sells out so quickly. Every time they release a batch, it's very hotly anticipated. People are waiting for it. Like they'll say it goes on sale at 7 p.m. and then at 7.05, it's sold out. It is a very popular whiskey. I can definitely see why people really want to get their hands on it. I love these kinds of whiskies because they can inspire me to maybe try new things or cocktail recipes. Myself and my wife in particular are very fond of a daiquiri made with whiskey. There's a link above here for our whiskey daiquiri cocktail. It's very nice and refreshing. That rum finished whiskey generally adds a nice round richness to a, to a daiquiri so I think it goes really well. I'm almost thinking maybe I should try out this whiskey in a daiquiri see if that extra rum finish comes through, see if that Pedro Jimenez makes a good appearance in the whiskey, but with it being so rare, with it only being released every now and then, I don't know if I should waste it like that. Maybe let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a daiquiri made with this versus any other Caribbean rum cask finished whiskey, see if there's a difference, but I think that's for me to ponder, for you to let me know, and until next time, sláinte.